We all have unique stories in our life, right? Your story is unique, mine. I'm sure the audience that's listening to us or watching us today, we all have unique paths we've crossed or gotten onto. I have a question for you. So, and we know that sharing stories really strengthens our relationships, it fosters, it cultivates them. Um, as you think about the thing, the journey that you've been on, what has surprised you the most about people that have overcome fears about sharing their stories at work? I know you've done a lot of public engagements where you talk about work. You talk about it in one of your topics where it's a people first culture. What surprises you the most? Jamal, thank you for the question. And I just want to follow up on one comment you made earlier about jujitsu, which is, uh, I think, Japanese for the, the gentle art, but doesn't look gentle to me. I love that you said the white belt is harder and the black belt it's like a process we're constantly learning we're never finished and as you and Anita have created this incredible Middle East connection uh, event today about creating that culture of belonging what I love is that it's about cultural competency it's not about being competent because if you're competent then that means your cup is full and you, you don't feel like you have anything else to learn. This is about competency. It's about attaining that ongoing black belt, which never finishes. Now you reach the black belt. I'm sure you're not going to finish. It's that lifelong process of learning and connection. And to bring it back to the question you asked, I think, you know, what surprises me the most is that aside from food, water, shelter, having a place to lay our head, what I have found to be the number one most universal need in all of my travels around the world, acceptance. Mm. Acceptance. Now, not just, it's not only, it's not enough that we accept one another. Actually, I would say that's the second step. The first step, which is much more difficult, is that we have to accept who? We have to accept ourselves. I've never in my life, I've never met somebody that is a self-accepting person who is judgmental of others not consistently mm -hmm. and when we find that we may judge others whether consciously or unconsciously oftentimes that comes from a lack of accepting and, and understanding ourselves i've been very fortunate over the course of the past 15 years uh dr jane goodall the primatologist, United Nations Messenger of Peace. She's actually sp speaking in Brooklyn today at the Brooklyn Museum. So I'm going to see her in a few hours, which I'm so, so thankful for. She's become a mentor, and I'm very, very grateful for that. Prior to meeting Dr. Jane, when I went to Tanzania, it was through Stony Brook University, and the adjunct professor there was a professor named Dr. Richard Leakey, who discovered mm -hmm. a very, very famous fossil called Turkanaboy. He's one of the 100 most influential people of the 20th century. His parents are the ones that actually funded Dr. Jane on her first journeys to Tanzania in the 1960s, Louis, Louis Leakey and Mary Leakey. And he said to me in an interview, he said this to me more than 10 years ago, Jamal. I said, well, what is my role in the world? Do I travel to Haiti? Do I travel to Mongolia? Where, he said, Chris, you have no obligation to travel one place or another. He said, you must start with respect and understanding. I said, oh, we must start with respect and understanding of others. He said, you must start with respect and understanding of yourself. But respect yeah. of others and respect of self, they're not divisible at all.